Good morning and happy Sabbath, family. I am Tiffany Claiborne, and I love studying the Word of God with God's people. Family, I am so excited about our lesson today because God is going to show us how to love others even more, just like His Son. So, you all know what we like to do as you're joining us. Please say good morning, say happy Sabbath, and let us know how good God has been to you. Winona, hey sis, it is good to see you. Welcome on this Sabbath morning. Owns, what's going on? Glad you got back safely. Yes, girl, happy Sabbath. What's going on, homie? Good morning and happy Sabbath to you as well. Family, it is testimony time. So as you're coming in, say good morning, say happy Sabbath, and let us know how good God has been to you. Lorraine, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you. Yes, happy Sabbath ounce. Miss Vivian, good morning and happy Sabbath to you. Chris, what is going on? It is good to see you, brother. Happy Sabbath. Silas Santana, I think it is your first time here. Good morning. Happy Sabbath all the way from Brazil. Good to see you. Inyoka, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you. Again, family, as you're coming in, say good morning. Say happy Sabbath. And I hope you are ready to dive into God's word today. So, Say happy Sabbath. Let us know your testimony, how good God has been. Iris, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you. Winona, you know I only, I had to only say hey, trying to be first. <laughs> Listen, Winona, you were first today, so kudos to you, girl. Elise, good morning and happy Sabbath. All the way from the state of Washington. Good to see you, sis. Audrey, good morning and happy Sabbath. Amara, what's going on, girl? Happy Sabbath. Grateful. Yes, grateful for another Sabbath. God is good. Marie, good morning and happy Sabbath. Cleavon, what's up, young man? Good to see you this morning. Happy Sabbath. Silas, my first time here. Thanks for the study. Silas, we want to welcome you. Our welcome time will be a little bit later, but I want to say right now, welcome to our family. We are happy that you're joining us today. Brooke, good morning and happy Sabbath, sis. It is good to see you. Juanita, good morning and happy Sabbath. Wilma, testimony, thanking God for a negative result. I have a history of cancer in my family, so I took a BRCA1 genetic test, and my genetic counselor called me yesterday with the good news that my result came back. Come on, Holy Spirit, came back negative. God is truly good. Amen, homie. Aunt Gwen, good morning and happy Sabbath. Blessings to you as well. Yolanda Grissom, good to see you this morning, sis. Welcome. Sister Jakes, good morning and happy Sabbath to you. Kim, what's up, y'all? This is my homie from college. We played soccer together. Other known, uh, people know it as football. Good to see you, girl. Glad that you are here all the way from Bermuda. All right, family, again, as you're coming in, say happy Sabbath. Let us know how good God has been to you. This is testimony time. At the beginning of our Sabbath School Live class, we always like to say happy Sabbath, and sometimes you have bad weeks. But hearing the testimony of another individual can encourage you. So that is why we encourage you to share your testimonies. Winona says, praising God for yet another test that is negative from the doctor. Amen. I'm still undergoing testing and looking for answers, but I am grateful. I'm prayerful and I trust Jehovah Rapha. Amen. Amen. We will keep you in prayer, sis. Desiree, good morning and happy Sabbath. Valerie, good morning and happy Sabbath. Pat, welcome. Happy Sabbath. Praising God this morning. After an ankle injury seven months ago, we just found out my ankle bone is fractured and I have a partially torn ligament. After all the hiking and exercise I've done this summer, God, come on now, in his mercy, spared my ankle from completely shattering. God is truly good. Amen. And we look forward to your testimony when you get it fixed. Jack Queese, what's going on, girl? Good morning. Good morning, Mo. Good to see you. Jennifer Lyons, what's up, girl? Good to see you. Happy Sabbath. 
Winona, yes, yet another. I got you. I saw that part. Trisha, good morning and happy Sabbath. Reba, good morning and happy Sabbath. Again, as you're coming in, we're just saying good morning, happy Sabbath. And if you have a testimony, please share it with us. Aaron, good morning and happy Sabbath to you and to the fam. Sister Novella Wallace, good morning and a blessed Sabbath to you. Nika, what's up? Happy Sabbath. My mom was in a car accident this week to where the airbag also deployed, but I'm grateful to God that she is okay. Praise God that your mom is doing well, Tanika. I'm so happy to hear that. Yvonne Davis, good morning and happy Sabbath. Miss Robin, good morning and happy Sabbath. Susan Rayer, good morning and happy Sabbath all the way from Salem, Oregon. Wonderful to see you. Thankful to God that he's helped me through this week. Praise God, sis. And Trisha, good morning and happy Sabbath. One more. Garfield Jones, good morning and happy Sabbath to you. It's my first time. Welcome, brother. You are only a guest one time. After that, you're automatically a member of the family. Watched my interview on 3ABN. Praise God. Tuning in from Hartford, Connecticut. Welcome, welcome. One more testimony. God blessed me with another ESL job. Come on, God. Now I have students from Chile and Peru. My daughter Jasmine is doing better with anxiety from just taking vegan vitamins. God is good. Amen. All right. Kim says testimony currently renovating our newly purchased home. Come on, God. Amen. And we have been blessed with outdoor furniture, appliances, stove, fridge, dishwasher, dryer. Come on, Jesus. And a host of other things for free. Can somebody say amen? Yes, we are grateful. Praise God, sis. Free always works. Sash, how you doing, girl? Good to see you here. Happy Sabbath. All right, and Susan, good morning and happy Sabbath. Thanking God for blessing your mom with 89 years. Amen. God is good. All right, family. So again, as you're coming in, please say happy Sabbath and let us know your testimony. But I want to start off our lesson today with this question. What do people do when they get angry? I want you to think about when you get angry, when someone you know gets angry, or people in general, what are some reactions or some actions people have when they get angry? Some people stay calm and maybe do this. My dad does that when he gets angry. I don't think he's on yet. When he gets upset, he starts sucking his teeth. What are some other things that you do or someone you know does when they get angry? What are some things you do when you get angry? <laughs> well, there's my dad. Happy Sabbath to you, daddy -o. Good to see you too, mommy. Yes, Simona, happy Sabbath. Good to see you. Marie says straight up yell. When you're upset, people yell. Very true. Madia says, Madia, what's up, girl? Sin not. I know, girl. It's hard. <laughs> Miss K, good morning and happy Sabbath. So happy that you are back and safe. Valerie, silence. Yes, this is my go-to many times when I get angry too. Yes, silence. All right, another one. And Yoka says, people shout when they get angry. Amara, people cuss when they get angry. Suddenly they become sailors, cursing like straight up sailors. Pat, glaring and will suck their teeth, suck your teeth. And that's usually when my NYC accent will come out. Listen, when you get upset, the real you comes out, right? Winona, clench my jaw and go to be alone so the Hulk isn't awakened. Yep, Susan, yell. Yes, when people get angry, there are many different reactions. Aunt Gwen says, stop talking blow up and let you know how they feel or talk to get understanding. Little Aaron says they see red. So true. Mo get quiet and eventually Kirk out. Yep. Sherry. Good morning. Good to see you sis. Jack Queese. My mom stays quiet. When I get angry, music has to come on. Cheryl. Happy Sabbath. Good to see you all the way from Brooklyn, New York. Brooke says, shut down because I know the way I'm used to expressing my anger is not so good. Garfield, turn red in the face. Yes, Desiree, people argue and fight. Again, we're talking about different ways people react when they get angry. 
Lashana, what's up, sis? Good morning and happy Sabbath. Silas says, people count to 50 when they are angry. True. Wilma, when we were kids, the first thing my mom did was yell. Find a stick and start chasing us. Listen, back in the day when it was A-OK to whip that baby's tail. It's still okay, but of course the law may say differently. <laughs> Robert, what's going on, brother? Happy Sabbath. Angry people, I mean, fam, you crazy. <laughs> Little Aaron said, start plotting. Yep, I'm going to get you back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Elise, I start cleaning. Wow, yes. Sash, shout and cry. Yep. Hey, what's going on, Jadina? Good to see you. Good morning and happy Sabbath all the way from Boston, Massachusetts. Juanita, what's up? Happy Sabbath. Robert says, angry, speak in their native tongue. That is so true or a foreign language. Listen, all kind of words come out when you get angry. Family, we all know that there are reactions when you get angry. And the reason I'm asking this question is because the lesson started off with somebody that was angry. I want us all to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 17. Deuteronomy 9 verse 17. We're going to see an individual and his reaction when he got angry. Let's all go to Deuteronomy 9 verse 17. Stacy, good morning and happy Sabbath, sis. Miss K, angry. Girl, I flare at the nose. Nostrils out. Get confused. Too much flowing through my mind to process. I have to let things go or it ends unpleasantly. Whoa. You won't like me when I get mad. Don't like myself at that time. Hey, let's be real. Aaron, their voice changes. They scream. They break things and even hit. These are some reactions when people get angry. Now, again, I want everyone to be going to Deuteronomy 9 verse 17. Robert says, get angry, see red and black out. Winona, I used to clean too. And then I realized people use that to their advantage. <laughs> Miss Esther, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you. My children say I bite my lip. I told you. Yep. Mo says, heading inside the church, have a great lesson. Good. See you next week, Mo. Hope everything goes well for you. Malik, what's going on? Good to see you, bro. David, good morning and happy Sabbath. All right, family, Deuteronomy chapter 9, and we're going to look at verse 17. Someone got angry. Now, this someone happened to be Moses. Let's see what Moses did when he got angry. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 17, trusting that all have found. It says, and I, Moses, took the two tables where the commandments were written on and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. Y'all Moses was hot. Moses was upset with the people because of what they had done. So let's dive into this a little bit more to get the foundation for our lesson today. We see that Moses was not a happy camper. Now, Moses got angry. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 16 and 17. So I want us to look at the verse right above verse 17. Again, same book, same chapter, and just one verse earlier. Verse 16 of Deuteronomy 9 says, And I looked, and behold, ye had sinned against the Lord your God, and had made you a molten calf. Ye have turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. And again, verse 17 of Deuteronomy 9. And I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. Y'all, Moses was upset. So we see again, Moses broke the first tables of stone because the people had made a molten calf and sinned against God. Ellen White says in Patriarchs and Prophets, a wonderful book, she says, to show his abhorrence of their crime, he threw down the tables of stone, and they were broken in the sight of all the people, thus signifying that as they had broken their covenant with God, so God had broken his covenant with them. Remember, we're getting the foundation for our lesson study today. 
Another comment came through Trish. I start having conversations speaking about what you do when you're angry in my head so that I can cool off and space out time so that what comes out of my mouth is deliberate. Sometimes the extra time is good. And sometimes the extra time is really bad. Hmm. Gerald, what's going on, brother? Hey, hey, Claudette, good morning and happy Sabbath. Kim, good to see you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. All right, family, so let's continue. The new tables of stone, they're mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. Now, I will summarize these verses. In verse 1, God told Moses to hew or make two tables of stone similar to the first ones. He also told Moses to build an ark. Thus, the fact that God told Moses to hew new tables like the first, and he would write on them the words that were on the first, shows that God had forgiven the people and was not done with them even then. Verse 2 of Deuteronomy 10 lets us know that God said he would write the same words, and he told Moses to put them in the ark. Verses three to four, Moses did as he was commanded. He made the ark of Shittim wood and then took everything to the Mount of God. Then God wrote the commandments again. Verse five, Moses came down from the mountain and placed the tables of stone in the ark as God has commanded. Verses six to seven, let us know that the children of Israel traveled place to place with the ark. And verses 8 to 10, God designated the tribe of Levi as the tribe to bear the Ark of the Covenant and to minister before God. So again, getting a foundation for our lesson, God is basically saying, I've forgiven you. I'm giving you new tables of stone with the exact same commandments. Oh, Christy, good morning and happy Sabbath, sis. Good to see you. Now continuing with the foundation, Moses' appeal to the people. Let's all go to Deuteronomy chapter 10, because again, remember our lesson is all about how to treat other people the way that God treats people. And we're getting the foundation. So the children of Israel are now seeing that God is giving them a new set of tables, right? With the commandments written again. Then Moses makes an appeal to the people. Deuteronomy chapter 10, and we're looking at verses 14 to 16. Here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 10. And let's read what he said. Verse 14 of Deuteronomy chapter 10. It says, behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God. The earth also with all that is therein. Moses is making an appeal to the people. Hey, remember God owns everything. Verse 15 of Deuteronomy 10. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Here's the, the crux. Verse 16 of, Daniel, of Deuteronomy 10. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked. Circumcise your heart, which we talked about last week. And stop being stiff necked. Why did he make this appeal and what did it mean? Criola, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this as we get again the foundation for our lesson. Verse 14 Moses reminds the people who God is. He tells them that all the heavens and the earth belong to God. First Chronicles 19 verse 11 gives us more information about God's sovereign power. It lets us know that the Lord is great, powerful, and exalted. Everything belongs to him. Colossians 1 verse 16 lets us know that all things were created by him and for him. In verse 15, Moses continues by emphasizing that God the Almighty delighted in their fathers so much that he loved them and chose their seed to be above all people. This shows God's love for his people. Jeremiah 31, three, God loves his children with an everlasting love. Remember, we're getting the foundation 
for our lesson today. We must first understand who God is and his sovereign power. We must next understand his love for his people. And the last part of the verse, verse 16, in light of all this, Moses said, therefore, circumcise your hearts and stop being so stubborn. What is the duty of God's people? I want us all to jump to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 6. Again, getting the foundation for our lesson today. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we're looking at verse 6. In light of who God is and how much he loves us, what is our duty as his people, his children. Deuteronomy 30 verse six, it says, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. Why? In order for you to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. This verse lets us know God is the one who does the circumcising and helps us to love him. But what about first Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, again, getting the foundation for our lesson. First Samuel chapter 15, looking at verse 23, first Samuel chapter 15, looking at verse 23. What does it say in this verse? Here we go. First Samuel 15, 23. Remember Moses was appealing to them. Hey, listen, God has forgiven you. He's the sovereign God. He loves his people. Now he needs you to fulfill your duty. Don't be stubborn. That's the last thing he said. First Samuel 15, 23 says for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being King. That was a specific message for the individual at that time speaking to Saul. But the first part explains why stubbornness is so dangerous. Kiana, good morning and happy Sabbath sis. Good to see you. So again, we saw that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Robert says, wow, God gave us the first set of stones with his testimony and character written on it. We broke it. Moses straight smashed them. Then God told Moses, make new tablets and bring them to God, representing us willingly giving God our heart so he can inscribe his character on it. Amen, brother. Paulette, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you. So family, we're starting off today's lesson. We have this foundation that even when we make mistakes, God still loves us. He still has compassion. He still comes to us, but he does require something from us. So how are we to love and treat others in the same way God loves and treats us? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you again so much for blessing us with another opportunity to get into your word. I ask that you please put your words in my mouth. Help us to all be blessed by this study. And thank you again for all of your love and protection in your name. Amen. All right, family. So again, we see how loving God is, but what is his message to us and how we should treat others? Before we get into that, I do want to say welcome to all of our family members and our guests. If it is your first time here with us, please let us know in the comment section by letting us know, Hey, I'm a first timer. This is my first time here because we want to welcome you. You are only a guest one time in the Sabbath school live family. The next week you'll automatically be a member of our family. So if it is your first time, please let us know in the comment section so that we can say welcome to you and let you know we are happy that you are a part of our family. I know Santana, you mentioned that this is your first time here. I think Silas Santana from Brazil. Uh, we want to welcome you again. Uh, Villa Hampton Frayson, good morning and happy Sabbath. We want to welcome you to this Sabbath school live family. We're so happy that you are here. Remember, this is a very interactive class. So any thoughts you have, sis, please pop them in the comment section and everyone, please welcome Villa to our family. 
Anyone else, is it your first time joining us? Please let us know so that we can say welcome. We are happy that you are joining us. This is an interactive live and online family. Desiree says, welcome to our new members. Stacy says, welcome. Regina says, good morning and happy Sabbath. Hey, sis. Gasana, happy Sabbath for the first time. Welcome. We are so happy that you are here. We want you to know you're only a guest one time. Starting next week, you'll automatically be a member of our family. Villa, yes, good morning and happy Sabbath. Silas, yes, first timer, so happy to hear that. Regina, welcome. We're happy that you are joining us. Again, we want you to feel loved. Christy says, welcome. Yes, Wilma says, welcome to all our new family members. Lashana says, welcome. Robert, welcome and blessings. Excuse me. We have more new members. All right. Jadina says, welcome, Villa. Good to see you. Valerie, first time watching live. Valerie, I know I've seen your name before, but welcome to our family. Gerald, welcome to Villa. Glennis, happy Sabbath to you. Elise, welcome to all the first timers. Be prepared to be blessed. Praise God. God is truly good. He is really blessing our class family. Trisha, first time all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. Good to see you here. Kim, yes, my girl. Again, so happy you're joining us here today. Andrea, good morning and happy Sabbath. Jadita says, welcome, Gasana. Lori, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. And a shout out to all the new family members. Yes, we have another one. Robert saying, welcome and blessings to you all. Reba, welcome to our family. Catherine, good morning and happy Sabbath. Everyone, good to see you and welcome. Gerald says, welcome. Miss Daisy, good morning and happy Sabbath. She says, you will be blessed. Praise God. Jadita says, welcome to all the new members. Welcome Villa from Paulette. Chris, happy Sabbath and welcome to all of the first timers. Regina, welcome to the family. Yes, Sasha, first time. Praise God, girl. Good to see you here for the first time. Impeccable timing. Look at God. Won't he do it? Uncle Joe, happy Sabbath to you and Aunt Valine. Welcome to all of our first timers heading to the church, but we'll be listening via the cell. Safe traveling mercies, Uncle Joe and Aunt Valine. Misi, what's going on, sis? Happy Sabbath and welcome to all the new members. As you all can tell, we want you to feel loved. We are happy that you are joining us. Please feel free to make comments whenever you'd like during the study. Aaron says, welcome. Paulette, welcome and happy Sabbath hugs to all the new members. Praise God, family. All right, so let me ask you all this question as we continue with our study. I want you to think about rich people, right? Rich people. Name some things that rich people own or buy. Think about it. What are some things that rich people own or buy? When they get a lot of money, these are the things they look to purchase. Or when someone has certain things, you naturally think, oh, that individual is rich. For example, if someone buys a Rolls Royce, oh, you're in that category. You are rich. What are some things that people are rich by or things they desire once they become rich? All right, here we go. The comments are coming through. I see another person came through. Hold on one second. I think it's Pamela. Good morning and happy Sabbath. And she says happy Sabbath to all of the brothers and sisters. Audrey, I'm so happy to be a part of this Sabbath school class. Praise God. I've learned so much. Amen. Kim says cars. Yes. Valerie property. Yes. Iris houses. Jadida mansion. Exactly. Pet yachts, cars, mansions. Kim. Yes. Property. Christy, lots of property. Gerald says boats and ships. Exactly. Simona fine dining. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wilma mansions. Exactly. Misi vacation homes, a lease, an island, or a yacht, Audrey properties. There are many things that people who are rich buy once they get the money. Patricia, cars, jewelry, houses, Cleavon, real estate or land, Kim, a Tesla, right? Reba, stocks. Aunt Gwen says, we welcome you to the new time, the first time visitors. You will be abundantly blessed. Praise God. Enjoy. Garfield artwork. Okay. I see you a jet Regina, a boat, a horse, novella, a yacht, Criola, a maid. Uh-huh. Lori stocks, Sash stocks, LOL 
Roth IRAs. <laughs> Catherine, a yacht, a mansion, and expensive cars. Daddy, a yacht. Jay, what's going on, bro? People. Okay. <laughs> Stacy, houses, cars, art, stock. Regina, people and rights. Family, we can all see that we recognize when someone is rich by the things they purchase or own. Then we have Susan, house, cars, jewelry, trips. Latosia, hey girl, cars, bigger houses, and now space travel, right? Jadita, stocks, Miss Robin, an island, Juanita, mansions, luxury cars, islands, Carol, a personal jet, Aunt Gwen, a Rolls Royce, a mansion, a business or investments, Jennifer, land, Chris, businesses, they build, Desiree says they build a metaverse, ah, I see you watch that, okay, all right. Uh huh. I see your Facebook situation. Robert, assets and influence. Carol, good morning, sis. Stocks, bonds, and investments. Paulette, isn't that something? Space travel. Mm. Silas, farms. Regina, a brand new body. Can I get, let me add that. Let me, exactly. Family, when people get money, they start to buy lots of things because they want to own a lot. Lori says trips to outer space. Carol, senators, representatives, and presidents. Wow, we're getting deep now. Now, these are things that we recognize that rich people own or want to buy. I want us to jump to this verse, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14, because it tells us something that God owns. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 14. Deuteronomy 10 and verse 14, what does God own? These rich people have investments, trips to outer space, a metaverse, stocks, bonds, investments. But what about God? Deuteronomy chapter 10, looking at verse 14. As you're searching for it, Villa says, health is so much greater than wealth. My brother David Hampton really could use prayer from any of you that would, when you get time, please, for salvation and healing. Definitely we will keep your brother in prayer, sis. Regina, judgment and decisions. Mm, deep. All right, Deuteronomy 10, verse 14. So what does the word of God say that God owns? Deuteronomy 10, verse 14. Here we go. It says, family, trusting that all have found. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. The earth also and all that therein is. So this outer space that these individuals are trying to travel to, God says, I own that. That's mine. God owns everything, the heavens, the universe, everything that we can see, God owns it all. But why is this important for us to understand? Let's jump into Monday's lesson. Another comment came through, Patricia, the earth, yes, sis, and all that is in it. Yes, Lori said she's praying for you, Villa. So let's jump into family. Monday's lesson and see why this is important for us to understand. You see on Monday, God says to love the stranger. Now, who is God? We just read from Deuteronomy, but Deuteronomy 10 verse 17 emphasizes God's total supremacy. He is a God of gods and Lord of Lords. Let's go to first Chronicles 16 verses 25 and 26. Again, we have to understand God's supremacy so that we can understand his command to each of us. Let's go to first Chronicles chapter 16. Again, if it's your first time, I'm sure you can already tell we get into the word in this class. So I hope you have your Bible ready, whether it's the physical Bible or on your phone, it does not matter. First Chronicles chapter 16, looking at verses 25 and 26, trusting that all have found. First Chronicles 16 verse 25 says, For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. Verse 26 of First Chronicles 16, For all the gods of the people are just idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Again, we're getting this emphasis on God being great, worthy of praise and to be feared. Other gods are simply idols. They aren't real. 
So what are we to remember about God? Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 18. Let's go there really quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 10. We're going back really quickly. So what are we to remember about God? Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 18. It says, he doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Wait a minute. Now we're seeing this other aspect of God being mentioned. We talked about he owns the heavens. They all belong to him. He created all. He's worthy of praise. He is worthy to be feared. He is great. But now we're seeing in verse 18 of Deuteronomy 10, a different side. He executes judgment and a specific group of people, three specific groups of people are mentioned. The fatherless, the widow, and the stranger. Why does God mention these three groups? Let's get into it, family. Here we go. He cares about the fatherless, the widow, and the stranger. He executeth judgment for the fatherless and the widows. Psalms 103 verse 6. I'll summarize. He executes righteousness and judgment for all the oppressed. And he cares about the oppressed. I want to pause real quick. Real quick question, not in the notes. I want you all to tell me, what are some things that are usually on the mind of a parent? I want you to think, even if you're not a parent yet, what are some things that parents worry about on a regular basis? Even if you don't have children yet. What are some things that parents worry about? Things that parents focus on. For example, are we going to have enough food this month to put on the table for our children? What are some other things that parents think about on a regular basis? Are my children happy? Are they safe? What are some other things? And again, I'm asking this question because we're looking at something that God focuses on. What do children focus, excuse me, what do parents focus on? Here we go. Wilma says the safety of their children. Sash, children's safety. Jadida, well-being of their child. Pat, our children's salvation and safety and their education. Yes. Mona, are they safe? Susan, child safety. Robert, fatherless widow and strangers. God champions those disadvantaged. Yes, he does, brother, and we're going to get more into it. Amara, the health and development of the child. Parents care about their children. Desiree, safety. Creola, have to leave now for church service. God bless you too. Hope you can watch the replay. Carol, safety of the children. Miss Kay, welfare and safety of their children. I want us to pay attention to these words that we keep saying over and over again. Valerie, child safety. Physical and psychological. Sash, health and safety of their children. Iris, kids safety and soul salvation. Chris, children's salvation and also bills. Creola, bills. Andrea, that they will make good friendships. We're talking about things that parents worry about on a regular basis. Creola says health. Ella says their health, novella, the health of children. Lorraine, let me stop from focusing to answer health and mental wellness and spiritual wellness. Mavelyn, hey sis, children, good morning and happy Sabbath to you too. Robert, parents think about will their children be loved and lovable? Reba, provision and protection for their children. Little Aaron, what are they doing? Where are they? What's going on around them? Lenora, character building. Carol, emotional well-being, spiritual development and safety. Gerald, what they have to deal with at school and out in the real world. Family, we all get it. Parents worry about their children. God worries about his children too. And he specifically mentions three groups. The fatherless the widows and the strangers. Now we're pretty familiar with the fatherless and the widows, but I want us to understand 
Just like we immediately started answering and we can understand how a mother or a father has this deep emotion, this deep concern for her child, for his child. God is saying, I care so much about my children, but I want to put an emphasis on three groups, the fatherless, the widows and the strangers. Why does God put so much emphasis on these three groups? As I was going through the lesson, I noticed tons of verses in God's word. The fatherless, the widows, the strangers, the fatherless, the widows, the strangers. God is trying to help us understand something, family. Another comment came through. Yes, racial profiling for your children. Jennifer influences. Exactly. Sam, yes. Yes, Glennis. God does care. Amen. Their entire well-being, yes, parents care, and so does God. So let's understand this a little bit more. I want us to jump to Psalms chapter 68 and look at verse 5. Psalms chapter 68 and verse 5. What does the Bible tell us about the fatherless in more detail? Psalms 68 and verse 5. Jadina says, because society tends to neglect those three groups, the fatherless, the widows, and the strangers. Nikki, what's up, girl? They are less able to care for themselves and are often on the outside of society. Yes, Nikki, such a great point. So we're seeing this other side of God. He's almighty, he's powerful, he's great, but then he has a soft side. He cares about those that are dis advantaged. And I want us to keep this in mind as we go through our lesson. Aunt Gwen, bullying for other children. Yes, parents worry about that. Paulette, glad you were able to join us, sister Gwen. Happy Sabbath. All right. Happy Sabbath to you too. All right. So we're in Psalms chapter 68 and verse five. What does this verse say regarding the fatherless? Hold on. Lori says, these are people that are forgotten and stigmatized. Mm. Robert, strangers to God, trust and believe, brother. This point is going to be brought out, and we're going to understand who these strangers are from the word of God. I prayed a lot about it this week, and I was like, Holy Spirit, come on now, Lord. Please make sure I or we represent you the way you deserve and bless them the way you bless us. Amen. Nikki, happy Sabbath, Tis. So happy to be here today. Yes, I'm so happy to see you too, girl. Beverly, happy Sabbath to you, sis. All right, Psalms 68 and verse 5. Here we go, family. (laughs) God is a father to the fatherless, and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Now, God says he is each and every one of our father, right? He's our father, but he specifically singles out the fatherless. Listen, if you did not have a father, God says, don't worry. I am your father. There's a reason that God is focusing on these individuals. And if God is focusing on them, what should we be doing? Don't worry. It's coming up, but what should we be doing? Jennifer says, happy Sabbath, Nikki Juanita. They are the most vulnerable to exploitation. Good point. Sash. What about those that are disadvantaged due to racism? And I understand strangers to mean immigrants. So I'm glad you brought that out again. We're going to get into that. I think around Tuesday or Wednesday's lesson, because I also was asking God, what is a stranger? What are you trying to tell us as your children? So yes, stay with me, sis, stay with us. We're going to get to that. Nicole says, Jennifer, happy Sabbath to you, girl. Yes. So Psalm 68 verse five family revealed to us. God is a father to the fatherless. What about Exodus 22? Let's go there. Exodus chapter 22. Again, we are getting into the word of God to find out what he says. Exodus chapter 22, looking at verses 22 to 24. Again, trying to get a better understanding of why God focuses so much on these three groups, the fatherless, the widows, and the strangers. This group, the strangers, we're going to have to learn more about. Exodus 22. Verses 22 to 24, trusting that all have found. It says, verse 22, ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Verse 23, if thou afflict them in any wise and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. I want you to think about somebody messing with your family. Think about it, family. 
We talked earlier about getting angry. I want you to think about someone coming in, messing with your sibling, your parents, your child. Something happens like, oh, 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 I'm not the one, right? And God is saying, listen, if you touch the fatherless, if you mess with the widow and they cry out to me, trust and believe I'm going to hear their cry. God is trying to emphasize how much he cares about these three groups. Verse 24 of Exodus 22 says, and my wrath shall wax hot. God getting a little bit angry y'all. And I will kill you with the sword and your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. God is trying to help us understand how much he's protecting these three groups of individuals. Now the comment came through Nikki to the least of them. Exactly. Hey, Darian, Darian says the fatherless and the widows are examples of the least of these that Christ charged us to love, clothe, feed, and take in Nikki and Darian. Y'all are looking at my notes. I love it. <laughs> Lori mercy. Yes, it is on. Watch out when the Lord comes for you. So this verse, these verses show us again, family, that God protects the widows. But what about first John chapter three? Let's go there. Family first John chapter three. And we're going to look at verses 17 and 18. Again, we are in the word because we need God's word in our lives. First John chapter three. And we're going to look at verses 17 and 18. First John chapter three. Verses 17 and 18. Another comment came through Regina. As you are looking for first John chapter three, love service minister and pray for. Yes. Robert says a father's role is to serve and protect when there is no father. There is a void or a gap in that role. Praise God. He is our father. Yet every male must understand this is his role too. Amen. All right. First John three verses 17 and 18 verse 17 says, but whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? God is saying, look, I've already told you these three groups, the fatherless, the widows, the strangers, they are precious to me. So if you decide to not help them, how can you say my love is in you again? God was really stepping on toes this week. As I was reading these verses, verse 18 of first John three, my little children, this is where God comes in. He's kind of thrown the smack down and he kind of softens up and says, Hey, Hey, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. God is saying, listen, I'm trying to help you understand that there are specific groups of individuals that are the less fortunate, that are in need of more love. And I care for them and I need you to love them as well, not just in word, but in deed and in truth. Yes. Mercy, poor representative of a savior. Wow. Beverly, as the intercessor, he steps in as the father of these. Amen. Darian, God stays stepping on my toes. Come on, brother, right here too. Mercy. So this verse, these verses let us know we are instructed to help those in need. We must take action. Well, here's the thing. Who are we? First Peter two, verse nine and 10. All right, let's backtrack just a little bit, right? We know who God is. He owns the heavens. He owns everything, right? We know he cares about this special group of individuals, right? But who are we? What does the Bible say about us? First Peter chapter two, verses nine and 10. Let's go there. First Peter chapter two, family, looking at verse nine and verse 10. Who are we? Some comments came through a good, good to see you. There is no way we can show God. We love him, but to love others. Amen. Amara looking at my nose girl. All right. So we're going to go to first Peter two verse nine first. And then Amara, we're going to go right to this verse. James one All right. So first Peter two verses nine and 10. Again, who are we according to God's word? Verse nine. 
But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We ain't no regular Joe Smoes on the street family. We are God's chosen people according to his word. Hold on one second. It says right here, a chosen generation, royalty, holy, God's special people. And yes, sister Patricia, priests to intercede for others. I like the way you put that. Now let's real quick jump to Amara's verse, James chapter one. And we're going to look at verse 27, James chapter one, verse 27. Here we go, family. It says, man, you're two days ahead of me, but I love this verse. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, I'm not going to give any comments on this just yet because it is coming up, but amazing verse. Now, Trish says, wait a minute, Tiff, who are the strangers? Trust me. We're going to be looking at this in more detail, who the strangers are. We know the fatherless and the widows, but who are the strangers? So hang in there. Amen. Amen. So here's the next question. What are we to remember? What does God want each and every one of us to? To remember, I want us to jump to Matthew 25, a longer set of verses, but I want us to check this out. Matthew 25. Again, we are God's children. We are God's royal priests to the chosen generation. But what do we need to remember? Jump to Matthew chapter 25. And while you're doing that, I see another verse came in the comments. Kiana says also first Corinthians six 19. So I want everyone have your finger ready, Matthew 25, and then go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. So keep your finger in Matthew 25, but everyone go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. All right, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God and ye are not your own. Very good verse emphasizing who we are. We're not our own. We're a chosen generation. We are here to give praises and bring glory to God. This is important for us to remember as we move through the lesson. Thanks so much, Kiana. All right. So Matthew chapter 25, going back to your finger, looking at verses 34 to 40, Matthew chapter 25, Verses 34 to 40. I'll read it quickly to you all. It says, Jesus speaking. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, second coming. Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Words we all want to hear. Jesus continues, verse 35 of Matthew 25. For I was an hungered and ye gave me meat. I think Nikki and Robert were talking about this earlier. The least of these. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger. Come on now. We see this word stranger coming up again. And ye took me in. Verse 36 of Matthew 25. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Let me ask this question. It seems like Jesus has given us clear instructions leading up to his second coming, how we are to live our lives. He's like, look, when you help somebody else in need, do you realize you're actually doing it for the son of God? I'm going to say this one more time. And I'm speaking to myself as well. Jesus was helping us to see, listen, When you help those that are hungry, those that are in need of clothes, those that are homeless, those that are in prison, those that are considered the least of these, I need you to remember that you are helping them just like they were the son of God. God has given us what we need to do. Why is it so difficult for us to follow these instructions? It's a rhetorical slash question on the table if you'd like to answer it. What is it that holds us back from helping people? Again, 
You can give the answers in the chat if you'd like, but there's something that happens inside of us when we see somebody homeless. There are moments when we want to help, but there are also moments where we hold back. What holds us back from helping people? Even though we know that God says when you help them, it's like helping me. What are some things that hold us back? I want to know your thoughts, family. Beverly says, whatever we do to the least of God's people, we do it unto him. Exactly. She also says selfishness. Selfishness sometimes holds us back from helping those in need. It's true. It's so interesting how the devil is so subtle. God has said, help them. And it's like you're helping me. Chris, um, Robert says, crystal clear, but it's only done properly when we are possessed by the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit. Most of the time, we're possessed by a different spirit. Mm. Novella says, fear holds us back from helping these individuals that God has already mentioned. Wilma, our own judgments of the person. Wow, Wilma, looking at the notes. Man, so true. Lori, our own needs. Mm. Sis, Aunt Gwen, we usually have our own agenda of how we want to help others. Reba, fear that you can't trust them. Mm. Sash, we are too comfortable. Patricia, judging. Mm. Darian, often we want to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. When we see people in need and hold on to the last part of James 1.27 that was mentioned by Amara earlier as an excuse to absolve us of loving the least of these. Mm. Pat, we justify not helping others, especially the homeless, because we think we know what they need. And they're tricking us into thinking they're not as bad as they claim to be. Mm. Jay says, I think the majority of us want to help others. Yes, but the swindlers, con artists out there make it hard for us to trust people enough to help them. Mm, good point. OD says we don't help because of selfishness and we make a judgment of their circumstances. Woo, family, listen, you guys are using the key words because we're going to be talking about judgment when we talk about strangers. Atosia, judgment and selfishness. Mm, Nikki, self-absorbed. Carol, thinking they are going to use the money for drugs. Chris, people have become so depraved that they literally impersonate the homeless. So people are hesitant to help homeless people because they're not sure if the person is really homeless or not. Elise says, sometimes we doubt the sincerity of their situation. Judging. Amara says negative experiences where the need was inflated or the help was misused. Juanita, it's inconvenient. Family, we're talking about reasons why we don't necessarily help those in need as much as we should. Pat, the verses that tell us to help others do not have an asterisk. There is no help them unless. The command is simply to help. Kiana says some people don't like to concern themselves with other people's issues and lives. Family, these are reasons why we have not done what Jesus asked us to do. And the devil is tricking us. Another comment came through Nikki. The reality is Jesus never called us to judge. Come on, Nikki, what the other person is doing. We are just called to help. What they do on their end is answerable to God. We will be judged on whether we helped or not. And Pat, Nikki says exactly what you said. Darian, real talk. That's why our impetus to help others has to come from the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we can have all kinds of excuses and judgments. So true. Now let's continue. Matthew 25. Now we're on verse 37. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, hold up. When did we see you hungry and fed thee or thirsty and we gave you something to drink? Verse 38. When saw we you a stranger? And took thee in or naked and clothed thee. Again, we're seeing this stranger piece. Verse 39. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Verse 40. And the king shall answer Jesus and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Matthew 25, verse 40. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Family, God is trying to teach us how to love 
the least of these. Another comment came through. Beverly says, regardless of our thought, we are to do our part. God sees and knows, and they will answer to him. Amen. Nikki says, Darian, yep, all the way. Robert, when the spirit of God is in us and we submit and listen, God leads us to whom we should go and what we should do. Amen. So Matthew 25 verses 34 to 40, Jesus explains the connection by talking about the second coming. He says, when you help a stranger, someone in need or someone sick, you are doing it for him. And James 1 27, we already read pure religion. Pure religion is three things, visiting the fatherless, visiting the widows and keeping unspotted from the world. I want to pause really quickly, family. I have a challenge for each and every one of us. I like to give a challenge um, when we have class. I haven't done it in a while, but we're only on Monday's lesson. But here's the challenge I have for each of us throughout this upcoming week over the next seven days. Picking one individual, whether it be a fatherless individual, a widow, or someone that is the least of these, picking one individual to help this upcoming week. Whatever it may be, God may lead you to give someone a sandwich. Cool. God may lead you to call someone that's a widow. God may lead you to take the fatherless out to lunch. What I'm saying is this week, the challenge is for each of us to find one individual to reach out to, keeping in mind that God said, when you do it for the least of these, you're doing it for me. Picking one person this week. That is the challenge. Ella, amen. Wanda, live for an audience of one, doing all things as unto him. Amen, Wanda. Jesus. Jay says, to what capacity is my help required? I have my own flock to attend to. My resources are not as vast as others. And this is something I'm glad you brought this up, Jay. God is not calling each of us to take all of the money out of our bank accounts and spend it and say, God, I've done my part. He also wants us to be wise with what he has put in our, uh, in our control. So I think the Holy Spirit will lead to show you what to give and what not to give. And I think that's a good point you brought out, Jay. Darian, love it. Yes, challenge accepted. Praise God. Family, if you're accepting the challenge, hit the like or the love button. Again, just to find one individual from those groups, the fatherless, the widows, the least of these, including the homeless, to help. Just one person this week. It doesn't have to be huge, but just something to remember and remind ourselves, God has told me to do this as his child. Pat says, this verse in Matthew changed my view. I now see those who are hurting as if it were Jesus on that sidewalk. Come on. Yes, sis. Of course, I'd stop if I knew it was Jesus. Now I stop. Robert, ask God to show you what to do and let's simply obey. Thanks for prodding to do good. Listen, the Holy Spirit is working. Jadita says, Jason, your help doesn't have to be more than you have. A simple prayer may be enough. Amen. Praise God, Nikki. Yes. Accepting the challenge. Praise God. Jason, again, Judita says, giving someone a ride. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Again, Jason, helping them fill out a job application, et cetera. Yes, family. Let's take this challenge this week to find one person to help. Reba. Wow. Tiffany, you really know how to keep us on our toes. Accepted. Listen, the Holy Spirit came through this week, y'all. He said, listen, Tiff, you can't just study the word. I need you to act, baby girl. God needs us all to act, and he's calling us out. So, yes, family, let's encourage each other to take this challenge this week. So, again, we're understanding that God wants us to reach out to these groups, pure religion, visiting the fatherless, visiting the widows, and keeping unspotted from the world. Now, you're probably still thinking, when are we going to get to the stranger? It's coming. Ella says, lean on the Holy Spirit and not yourself and do the fathers uh, and do the father in heaven do his business. Amen. Miss Robin accepted. Amen. Miss Beverly, I'm doing this. I have one person that I help. Praise God. Daddy, I accept the challenge on my way to church. Amen. Family, let's support each other over the next seven days. Nikki speaking to Jason. I think there's a good story about this in Mark or Luke, where God addresses faith about a woman who gave of her scarcity, amen, versus those who give from their abundance. 
I'd Google that story so you can see what God would have us to do. Amen. Susan accepting the challenge. Praise God. Family, let me ask you this question as we continue moving through our lesson. Here's the question. I want you to name some things that people usually love. Just very broad. It can be a thing. It can be a person. What are some things that people usually love? For example, people love chocolate. People love some chocolate, y'all. Come on now. What are some things people love? People love to travel. What are some things people love? You can say what you love or just in general. People love chocolate. People love traveling. People love music. What are some things that people love? Put them in the comment section, family. Another comment came through. Praise God. Yes, Jadita, I accept the challenge. Amen. Latosha accepting the challenge. Amen. But our family has been doing this since March. Amen. We go into Portland once a month and feed the homeless. Praise God. It's been a huge blessing. Amen. When you help others, it actually also helps you too. God is good. Janita, yes, people love food. I am in that category. Amen. Chris, the widow's might is the story. Yes, speaking about what you mentioned, um, Nikki. Yes, Nikki, come on now. Food, listen, I'm going to put this out there. If you have been blessed by God and you're in the Maryland, D.C. area with the gift of cooking, let a sister know. I like cooking, but I also like eating the food. <laughs> Jennifer, food, yes. Desiree, ministry in action. We will fill gallon bags for the homeless. Amen, yes, the challenge. Pat, people love music, yes. Wilma, people love money. Novella, people love music. Akut says, people love someone to talk to, exactly. Wanda, money, power, food, music, etc. Exactly. Simona, their dog. Yes. Juanita, chocolate. Reba, food. Jadita, music. Paulette, speaking to Jason. I just read this posted in my kitchen. It is the greatest of all mistakes to do nothing because you can only do a little. Wow. Do what you can. Mm, powerful from Sydney Smith. Kiana, puppies. Yes, people love their puppies. True. Iris, cruising. Nikki to Chris, thank you. Yes, she only gave a very small amount, but it was a sacrifice. Speaking of the widow's might, yes. Jadita, clothes. Yes, Darian, people love TV, social media, good food, and gadgets. Robert, prayer is not a cop-out. It's a connection to the divine, and in order to get specific instructions and direction for what we should do, Practice makes perfect. Amen. Desiree, people love children, food, and animals. Carol, food. Yes, Patricia. People love shoes, clothes, shopping. Latosia, people love fellowship with friends and family. Tambra, hey, Tambra, shopping. Paulette, we'll continue living the challenge. Praise God, sis. Aaron, little Aaron, some good food. And Charlie, hey, Charlie, chocolate. Yes. Nikki, ditto, Tiff, bless us with those plates. Listen, y'all, I am not ashamed of the plate. <laughs> if you got a plate, holla at a sister. All right, Robert, yes, listen, bruh. <laughs> Elise, love museums and history. Audrey, I love to cook. I'm in Maryland. Audrey, DM me, sis. Um, Maurice, hey, Damien, what's up? Words of affirmation, true. Aunt Gwen, music and nice things. Ella, people love people. Miss Robin, food. Oh, there's another vegan restaurant called Loving Hut. Google it. Yes, Loving Hut. Thank you, Miss Robin. Your last suggestion was amazing. Yes, Kiana, free food. True. Octavia, amazing how God works. I have a high school student who wears blouses that don't cover her enough. I was judging her, thinking that she was just trying to get noticed. However, God put it on my heart to ask her why she dressed that way. She told me that she doesn't have proper fitting blouses. I felt terrible and asked her, would it be okay if I bought her some? And her eyes lit up. When I asked her what colors and styles she would like, she said, whatever I get would be fine. Going shopping tomorrow. Listen, God has called us to be lights. And sis, God used you to be a light for that student. God is truly good. Nikki, also people love naps. Or maybe that's just me. No, sis. We're right here. Naps, listen. Wilma, you know, my naps, listen. God is good. Them naps are serious. Robert, praise God you listened and obeyed. Amen. Audrey, I'm happy to buy the food if you can turn it into a meal. 
Ah, yes. Reba, lesson is good, but must go to service. Have a wonderful Sabbath, Reba. Looking forward to next Sabbath. Praise God. Kim, traveling. Yes. Christy, will continue living the challenge. Going to church soon. Sabbath blessings to you too, sis. All right, so people love lots of things, but there's one thing we did not mention. There's one thing that nobody said that we love. Miss Cases, you know where I live when you are hungry. I do know where you live. No invitation needed as long as I am home. This is why Miss K is so close to my heart and my family's heart. <laughs> All right, family, there's one thing that no one said. Deuteronomy 10, verse 19, let's go there. Deuteronomy 10, verse 19, no one mentioned this or these individuals as things or people we love. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. Deuteronomy 10, verse 19. All right. Hey, Maxine, Robert, folks, we in church now and we love Jesus. Amen. <laughs> All right. Deuteronomy 10, verse 19. Ella, the word of God. Amen. Gerald, really, Kate? Listen, Gerald, don't hate. I'm saying, you know what I mean? You can get on the bandwagon. Uh, Nikki, this K. I'll be in Tiff's car when she stops by. Listen, she is always willing, girl. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy 10, verse 19. Sash, girl, you got my husband over here singing your tune, I am not afraid of the plate. <laughs> Listen, bruh, that joint's legit, right? <laughs> Brian, what did I miss? Y'all need to start over again. We love Pine Forge Academy. That last statement is a fallacy. Psych. I love my Pine Forge family, but y'all already know me and me and Brian. All right, y'all. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. Here we go. No one mentioned this when we're talking about things we are to love. But God says, Deuteronomy 10, verse 19. Love ye therefore the stranger. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Now, why is God emphasizing the stranger so much and loving the stranger? Let's get into it, family, and find out why God emphasizes this so much. Here we go. A command about strangers. Deuteronomy 10, verse 19. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Who was God talking to first and foremost? Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. First and foremost, let's find exactly who God was talking to. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. Who was God talking to? Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. While you're looking that up, Paulette says, listen, family, no matter how little you have, share, share, share. Keeping your hands closed. Make a fist. Nothing can be placed in it. However, sharing, opening your hands, see what happens there. Someone can place something in it. I love that analogy. We do not have to worry about not being able to provide when you share. Let God worry about providing for you. Amen. Brian, I secretly love only one person from TA. She knows who she is. For real. I think my sister got some, uh, is feeling some kind of way. Brian, blasphemy. TA all day. Of course, Tacoma Academy. Come on now. Brian, well, we just got confirmation who it is. <laughs> Simona, basically, Bryant says he's not loving you. He's only going to love me from TA. <laughs> and says, enjoy the lesson. We have to go to church. Have a wonderful day at church, sis. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Who was God talking to when he said, hey, I need y'all to love the strangers? Who was he talking to? Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. <laughs> Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. It says, for thou art an holy people. Unto the Lord thy God, for the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God was speaking to the children of Israel, his chosen people. And remember, we are also God's chosen generation. But God was specifically speaking to his children. Hey, I need you guys to remember, yes, you're my chosen people, but I need you to love the stranger, his children, the chosen people, the royal priesthood, his special and holy people, the children of Israel. Lenora says, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. The parable of five loaves and fish always comes through. Amen. Robert, yes, paradigm shift. Love strangers, everyone who doesn't know God, high and low, rich and poor. So let's see. 
Who are the strangers? Well, the Hebrew word, we first have to look at the Hebrew word family. Hold on. Some comments came through. Pat, anyone who doesn't know the one true God is a stranger to the family of God. Same way he made us family when we were strangers to him. That's what we're to do towards others. Amen. Janelle, hey, in the words of Bishop G.E. Patterson, if he can give it through you, he, I think it cut off the last part. Give me the last part. Little is much when God is in it. Amen, Beverly. So the Hebrew, again, looking at the Hebrew from this verse. Uh-oh, hold on. Maxine, sorry, my baby got a hold of my phone. No worries. Happy Sabbath. Love the image of truly seeing Christ when we see someone in need. Amen. All right. Hebrew, H1616. A he, for the Hebrew breakdown of this word, a stranger is a guest or a foreigner. Dictionary. A foreigner, someone who is excluded from or is not a member of a group. Someone who is excluded from or not a member of a group. Let me pause really quickly just to do a recap of what we've looked at so far. God owns all of the heavens, the earth. He is almighty, worthy of praise and honor. We are his special people. He takes care of us, but he also emphasizes three groups, the fatherless, the widows, and the strangers. Now we're seeing the stranger is in the individual that is not a member of a group. And God is said to love these individuals. So the lesson continued centuries earlier, the Lord told Abram, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them. And they will be afflicted by them 400 years. God's own people had at one time been oppressed strangers. I don't want to give you too much just yet. God was speaking to his special people. And he said, I need you guys to love the strangers. Why? Because you once were a stranger. Don't forget where you came from. God is reminding his people, listen, you used to be strangers. Y'all know how it felt to be afflicted, to be treated unfairly when you were in Egypt. Now that you're out of Egypt, I done saved you. Now you're my special people and you are lights in this world. When a stranger comes into your group, into your midst, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget that you used to be in the exact same position. God is smooth with it, y'all. God is very smooth with his words. Hey, love the strangers because you were strangers in Egypt. Don't forget where you came from. Continuing. How does God say to treat strangers? All right, bet God. How are we to treat them then? These strangers. Another comment came through. Janiel speaking about, oh, he will give it to you. What you need to help others. Nikki, yes, mercy. Patricia, this lesson reminded me of all the people on the southern border of U.S. of the U.S. and the uproar it caused and is causing. Mm. Sash, listen, the Holy Spirit's coming through, girl. So here's the thing. Oh, some more comments came through. Brian, so question is, once someone comes into your aura or space, how long until they go from stranger to family? Or how long should we consider them no longer a stranger? I mean, are they really strangers if all come from Adam, Eve, and ultimately God? Basically, just a cousin. We didn't know what their, they were there until they got here. Here's the thing. Remember, we looked at the definition. A stranger is anyone not a member, currently not a member of a certain group. And I'm trying to say something without saying it. And I think y'all are following me. God is trying to emphasize that there are going to be people around you that may not be a part of your group. God says, love the stranger. Now, how are we supposed to love them? He gave more details in his word. Robert, so anyone not in the family of God by their choice or ignorance is a stranger that we should L-O-V-E love. 
whether they walk in our midst or walk in theirs family. God is trying to emphasize the importance of loving others. Remember we learned last week and the week before the second greatest commandment, love others as yourself. The first being love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. The second being love others. God is saying, I'm not playing games. I'm not saying just love those that are in your group. I need you to love everyone, including the strangers that are where you used to be. Now we're going to get into this a little bit more. So how does God say to treat them? Exodus chapter 22, verse 21. We read that earlier. Don't vex. Excuse me. We did not read that. Let's go there. Exodus 22 and verse 21. Exodus 22, verse 21. Quickly, family. Exodus 22 and verse 21. Trusting that all have found. It says, thou shalt... Neither vex a stranger nor oppress him for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Man, I hope the Holy Spirit is moving on all of our hearts right now. Don't vex them. Don't oppress them. Individuals that are not a part of the group you're in. Don't vex them. Don't oppress them because you used to be where they are now. Sash says a stranger is anyone that feels suppressed or excluded. Our goal is to welcome them always and show the love of God. Amen. So Exodus 22 verse 21, don't vex or oppress a stranger because you also used to be a stranger. Leviticus 19 verses 33 and 34, don't vex them. Instead, treat them as one born among you. Love them as yourself. Miss Robin, I got to go. I'm singing the praise team. Praise God. Have a blessed day too. And we hope that uh, we hear your voice and the sweet melodies. All right. So again, we're learning more how to love the strangers. There are two don'ts and two do's. The first don't is don't vex. And now to save time, I'm going to just give the summary. Ephesians chapter four, verses one to three. In order to walk worthy of our calling, we must be humble, long suffering and seek for peace, not to vex others. So when someone is in our midst, that is not of the group, God says you are not to vex them. Instead, according to Ephesians, be humble, be long suffering and remember where you used to be. Don't vex the stranger. Another comment came through Nikki. I won't even get into the fact that none of us are Jews. <laughs> so we are all strangers. Jesus came to make sure we are all called family instead, right? Believing in him. Now we also are a part of the promise, his chosen generation. Lori. Awesome. Teach us Holy spirit. Yes. Don't vex the stranger. Next. Don't oppress. Philippians 2, 3, with humility, esteem others better than yourself. In other words, build people up as children of God. Listen, there is so much in this that God needs each and every one of us as believers in God, believers in Christ, believers in his holy word. He needs us to understand we have to stop oppressing people. We have to stop putting people down. He says, instead, listen, Philippians two, three, esteem others better than yourself. God is giving us what we need to finally be like him. All right. Niclo, uh, Niclo says, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sif, uh, sis, good to see you, Robert. You slinging some stones. Now listen, the Holy spirit was slinging all week. My way, bruh. So everyone, not in our group, we shouldn't mistreat, talk bad about, avoid, upset, or anger them through our actions or intentional neglect. Wow. Exactly. Help us, Lord. Thanks, Tiff. Hey, Holy Spirit. Shots fired. We all just have to help each other. We can protect each other. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Tammy. Saying happy Sabbath to Sister Paulette. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Tammy, happy Sabbath, Sister Beverly. Yes. Paulette, happy Sabbath, Sister 9 o'clock. Brian, we got to build people up. Yes, build them up. Kingdoms are made with bricks, not shreds. I like that. 
bricks not shred. So two don'ts, don't vex and don't oppress. And family, the Holy Spirit needs each and every one of us to remember these things. Because remember on Monday and Sunday, God said, I care about certain individuals, especially those who are widows, those who are fatherless and the strangers. He cares about these individuals. Now, what about the dues? Treat them as family. Treat them like family, like someone born in your home. Matthew 7, 12, treat others the same way you want to be treated. And finally, love them as yourself. Matthew 22, verses 36 to 39. These verses, the second greatest commandment is to love people as yourself. Family, this entire book is about loving God and loving people. The first four commandments are all about loving God. The last six commandments are all about loving people. God is saying, I need you as my children, as the lights of this world to remember what I have called you to do. I have called you to love everyone, the fatherless, the widows, and the stranger, the individual that's where you used to be. Show them compassion, love, remember where you were. Some comments came through. Juanita, recently I was a stranger in someone's home. I was very grateful for their hospitality, for taking in my friend and I for the short time, short time we were there. Praise God. Hey, Darlene, happy Sabbath, sis. Good to see you. Susan, happy Sabbath. Yes, golden rule. Amen. Brian, so everyone here will give me $5. I mean, we are family. Put the word to practice. You don't need $5, so I rebuke that. <laughs> Beverly, amen. Amen. Oh, listen, Sash, see, Sash has a big heart. I guess I judged Brian. I judged you, brother, and I shouldn't have judged you. But for some reason, I feel like I am correct in the fact that you don't need $5. <laughs> but Sasha got you. Robert, now you done went from preaching to meddling. Treat every stranger like family. Come on now. Finish the work, Lord. Hey, I'm just telling you what God said. It's not Tiff's words, God's word. Amen. Novella, this is tight, but it's right. Since we all need to repent, help us, Lord. Remember, we're all here together, family, to encourage, to help each other be like Christ. That is the purpose of us studying together every Sabbath morning. We want to be more like Christ. We know we mess up. We know we're not perfect yet, but we're all studying together and encouraging each other to finally be like Christ. Sash Bryant, you need it, bruh? I don't know, Sash. Be careful. <laughs> Susan, looking back to see where God brought you from. Brian, you're right. I don't need you know me well. <laughs> I'm no longer a stranger. I know you, bruh. <laughs> All right. So this is what God is telling us to do, how to love. To do's, don't vex, don't oppress, treat them as family, and love them as yourself. God's message to each of us today Number one, family, we have an oppressor. Stay with me. Come on, Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6, 12, our battle is not with people. It's with evil, the devil and his demons. First Peter 5, 8, the devil lurks around and seeks to devour us. Hold up. The children of Israel had an oppressor when they were in Egypt. They were in bondage. They were strangers in that land. God is saying, hey, my son, my daughter, you are here on this earth, and you also have an oppressor that tries to hold you back with those secret sins, those things that others may not know about. He is the oppressor. But my child, 1 John 5, 4, we can overcome by our faith in God. God says, just like I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, I can bring you out of your situation. And many of us have been brought out of situations because of God. Because of our faith in him, he's brought us out. He says, listen, my child, you had an oppressor. You were afflicted, but now I have redeemed you. You've overcome. Now, God says, how are we to treat those experiencing what we experienced? We must remember how Jesus treated people. We must treat those that don't know about his goodness in the same way that we would want to be treated. So when someone experiences the same challenge you experienced, don't judge. Instead, remember where you used to be and love them the way God needs you to love them. 
When someone experiences a challenge, they are oppressed by the oppressor and they're going through some challenges. Maybe they're struggling with certain sins. Maybe there's certain aspects of the Bible they don't necessarily understand or believe yet. God says it's okay. Look at them like the strangers I mentioned in the Bible. And I want you to love them as I've commanded you to. Don't forget where you've come from. Yes, Nikki. Yes. All right. Robert says same devils, different ones at different levels, but still the same devils. Now, Clot, don't take God for granted. Amen. Boom. Exactly. Listen, I'm looking at the time. Y'all pray for your sister. We have two days to get through in 15 minutes. Pray for me. Let's keep going. God is good. All right. So here's the question I want to ask you all as we continue moving through our lesson. Here's the question, family. List some things we were told not to do as children. Y'all know what I'm saying. I actually had a conversation with my parents last night about raising kids. And, you know, you don't spare the rod, you spare the rod, spare the child. We were just talking about different things happening in our society today. But I want you to think about when you were younger. If you're still a child now, talk about what your parents don't let you do. But what are some things we were told not to do as children? Things that we were told not to do as children. Wanda says we're told not to lie. You better not lie. You better tell me the truth. What are some other things we were told not to do when we were children? Don't stay out. Once the street light comes on, get your butt inside. Don't stay outside in the dark. What are some other things? All right. Susan says don't steal. Yes. Elise, don't talk to strangers. Robert, don't talk to strangers. Wanda, don't talk to strangers. Yes. What are some other things we were told not to do when we were growing up? Here we go. Here we go. Some other ones came through. Yes, Nikki, you better not touch the stove. Don't do it. Don't do it. Aunt Gwen, don't touch the stove. Don't talk to strangers. Marie, don't talk to strangers. Sash, don't touch anything in the store. Philip, greatest challenge we face is to learn what love of the stranger looks like for the believer. Mm. Don't be disrespectful. Pat, when I wasn't clothed in righteousness, he came and covered me. When I was thirsty, he gave me living water. When I was hungry, he fed my soul. When I was enslaved, he set me free. That's what I remember when I think about where I came from and how to help those that are struggling. Amen. We were told not to talk to strangers. Desiree, don't stand in front of the open refrigerator. Iris, don't talk back. Don't fight. Chris, don't lie. Don't steal. When we go in here, don't touch nothing. Exactly. Don't lie, Ella. Lenora, don't talk back or mumble under your breath. Lori, don't talk when adults are speaking. Yes, I'm so confused why this is not the case now. It confuses me when I'm like, wait a minute, adults are talking. Yes, Matthew, don't eat between meals. Woo, we're all breaking that rule. All right, Miss Linda, good to see you. Don't talk back. Wilma, don't ride your bike too much farther than the house. We got in trouble for that too. <laughs> Iris, stay out of grown folks' business. Yes, Jamie, don't touch the stove. Kiana, don't have company when mom isn't home. Jamie, it's good to see you and Matt. Audrey, don't take what's not yours. Miss K, don't lie, don't steal, don't talk to strangers, and grandma will deal with everything else. Nikki, don't waste water. Finish what you're doing and shut it off. Philip, children are to respect their elders. Yes. Um, Tammy, don't be disobedient. Darian, speak only when you're spoken to. Jennifer, don't fight with your siblings. They will be the only family you have. Oh, and tag someone. Lorraine, don't let me hear your name in someone else's mouth, meaning don't act up. Susan, oh, yeah. Don't hitchhike. Don't roll your eyes. Don't talk with your mouth full. Pamela, don't let anyone in the house when we, the parents, are not home. Desiree says, hey, Jamie. And Kiana, don't try me. There are many things we were told not to do when we were growing up. But there's something that God tells us not to do in his word. Let's go there quickly, family. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1. God, our father, tells us not to do something as well. Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to look at verse 1. Matthew chapter 7, looking at verse 1. Our parents, when we were growing up, told us certain things not to do. But what does God in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, tell us not 
to do. As you're looking for it, some more came through. Jadita says, don't follow the crowd. Yolanda, don't run in the house. Don't slam the front door and don't play with your food. Brian, be better. You better do those chores before I get home or else. Oh, that was, was that just me? No, that was everybody. <laughs> Don't judge exactly. Matthew 7, verse 1. Here we go, family. It says, Jesus speaking, judge not that ye be not judged. So now we're seeing God give us some more information. Chris says, read verse 2. All right, verse 2 says, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured you again. Basically, the same way you judge is the same way you will be judged. So let's get into this family a little bit more. This verse and this part of the lesson. Here we go. Bible verses about judging others. I'll give the summary. Matthew 7 verses 1 and 2. Don't judge others the same way you judge others is the same way you will be judged. Luke 6 verse 37, don't judge or condemn others and you will not be judged or condemned. Romans 2 verses 1 and 2, judging others condemns yourself. God's judgment is according to truth. Romans 14 verses 10 and 13, 10 to 13. We will all be judged by God one day. Don't judge. Instead, make an effort to not be a stumbling block for others. And finally, James 4 verse 11. Warning against speaking evil of others and judging them. This is equal to judging the law. Family, God is very clear. He does not want us to judge others. Now, some other comments came through. Selma, hello, happy Sabbath, good to see you. O.D. Tiffany, it's important to point out that what we are studying here in terms of helping the oppressed, fatherless, and strangers as individuals and as a nation is considered socialism in some political circles. Let's not fall into that trap, but do as God commands. Amen. This is, now we are commanded to follow the laws of the land, but this is the first law that we each must follow and obey. Amen. So then what are these verses showing us family? Why did God let us know that we are not to judge? Now there is a group that God said should judge how judges amongst God's people were to judge Deuteronomy one verse 16 judge righteously between every man, including the stranger. When judging, according to Deuteronomy 16, verse 19, when judging, don't take bribes or show any special preference. Basically, treat everyone fairly. God is speaking against injustice. Let me read this quote from the lesson. The weak, the poor, the outcasts don't get the same kind of justice in most human courts as do those with money, power, and connections. It doesn't matter the country, the era, the culture, nor how lofty the principles of justice and equity that are enshrined in const excuse me, constitutions or laws or whatever. The reality remains the same. The poor, the weak, the outcasts almost never get the justice that others do. That's what is so remarkable about what the Lord himself was saying here. This unfairness, which is everywhere else, should not be done in Israel among God's people, the ones who are to represent him to the world. In a sense, to use a term from the modern era, the Lord wanted there to be equal justice under the law in ancient Israel. God does not believe in injustice. He wants everyone to be treated fairly. Now, I want to ask you this question as we move towards the end of our lesson, family. I want you to think about our society. It can be your country. If you're living in another country right now, that's A-OK. -okay. Think about your society, where you live, or even the world in general. Name some respected or honored people in our society today. For example, Oprah Winfrey, Barack Obama. Name some people that are honored and respected in our society today. Anyone you can think of that people, when they hear that individual's name, they say, ah, 
he's a good one, or ah, she's a good one, or they've done something to help our society in a big way. Name some people that are respected or honored in our society. All right. Selma says, Tiff, I used to judge others, but when I read James, I work on stop doing, not doing that anymore. Judgment is for God on that great day. Amen. We are to see the wrong state and help the person, but not judge them. Amen. Robert, we don't determine heaven or hell for anyone else, and we don't know their intentions or circumstances. So when we judge or draw conclusions, we should do so through divine insight with grace. Jadina says, Beyonce, Elise, President Joe Biden, Pat, Michelle Obama, Octavia, Michelle Obama, Darian, Michelle Obama, Trish, the late Colin Powell. There are many people that we honor and respect in our society. And again, any more, pop them in the comment section. Sash, Ruth Bader, I think it's Ginsburg or Ginsburg. Yes, Nikki, Oprah, Maria, late Mother Teresa. There are many people that we respect and hold in high regards because of what they've done. Desiree, Martin Luther King, yes, people still read books about him and talk about him. Yes, many people are honored and respected. I want us to jump to 1 Peter 2, verse 17, as we're bringing our lesson to a close. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 17. 1 Peter 2. And verse 17, there are certain people that we respect and we honor them, right? But God says something very interesting. First Peter chapter two, verse 17, a coot says Harriet Tubman. Exactly. First Peter two, verse 17. It says, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God and honor the king. Honor all men. Who says, oh, Harry Tubman, yes, I got you. So why does this verse bring this point out? Let's jump into it as we bring our lesson to a close. The importance of dignity and respect. This comes from Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 10 to 15. In verses 10 and 11, it mentions that if you lend someone something, don't disrespect them by barging into their house to get it back. Instead, respect them by letting them return it. God is dealing with how we treat others. Verses 14 and 15 let us know that we should not oppress the servant or the poor or needy. We should treat them instead with dignity and give them what they are due in a timely manner. You see, family, again, we see the Lord's concern for basic human dignity. If Israel were to be a witness, a holy people walking in truth amid a world steeped in error, idolatry, evil, and sin, surely they would have to be kind to the weakest and most marginalized among them. Otherwise, their witness would be nothing. I want us to all realize that these words are also being directed to each and every one of us. God cares about injustice and he wants us to respect everyone and treat everyone with dignity, no matter what their position is. You see family, God was again reminding them that his children, the lights of the world were to operate in a different way. They were to treat everyone with the utmost respect. This is his message to us too. Everyone we come in contact with deserves dignity and respect no matter what their position is. Bringing it to a close, the biblical definition of pure religion. We, we read this verse earlier. Pure religion is defined as visiting the fatherless in their affliction, visiting the widows in their affliction, and keeping oneself unspotted from the world. The fatherless. God is a father to the fatherless. The widows, the importance of helping those that are burdened and helping the poor and being unspotted from the world. Romans 12 verse two, God wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Family, God wants us to treat others the way his son Jesus treated others when he was on earth. 
without condemnation, like family and with love. Once again, God is calling us family, his children, the lights in this world in 2021, right now, his chosen people, a royal priesthood. He said, I need you to treat others with dignity and respect. I need you to treat others without condemnation. Treat them like family and treat others with love. Family, this is the message that God had for each and every one of us in today's lesson. That's all I have for you. I pray that you were blessed. I pray that God touched your heart with these words. And if there are any final comments, please put them in the comment section and let us know what God has revealed to you of anything else. Yes, mercy. Uh, yes, Aunt Gwen, Maya Angelou is also very popular. Wow, pray church. Yes, Darian, practical words for 2021 from the ageless living word. Amen. Everyone, Juanita, is a child of God and worthy of the kingdom. Amen. Kiana, yes. Kamala Harris, yes. She's also very popular. Aunt Gwen, thanks again for a great lesson, keeping you lifted up in prayer. Thank you for your prayers. God is good. Praise God. Yes. Robert, help us, me, treat everyone, enemy, haters, unthankful, selfish, rude, and unreasonable with love and respect. Amen. Nicole, just praying for the Jones family after the loss of their mother. Definitely. Please keep them in prayer, guys. Definitely will do that. Thank you, Nikki, for saying that. All right, family, please remember the challenge. If you have other prayer requests, please put them in the comment section. Please remember the challenge this week to help one person, one fatherless or one widow, someone, a homeless person, help one person this week. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, praise God. Thank you so much, sis. Awesome lesson. Praise God. God is truly good. Elise, blessed again. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Tiff, for the anointing through Christ. Amen. Miss Kay, thank you for your continued service. Praise God. God is good. Keep a sister in prayer. Pray up. Amen. Paulette, I was blessed. Sabbath peace, family. Great lesson study. Amen. Mar Maria, blessings. Thank you for the lesson. Praise God. Sash, praise God. Thank you, Tiff. Hey, got you, sis. God is good. Happy Sabbath, family. Let's keep this lesson in our hearts. Amen. We should keep and respect everyone because God said so. Amen, Akut. Pam, what's up, sis? Praise the Lord for you. Thank you for the word. Amen. Great lesson. I always get convicted of something I need to do. Praise God, sis. Nikki, beautiful lesson. We are unlearning to learn. Amen. Thank you, God. I'm going to pray for the whole family and the loss of their mom. Definitely. Happy Sabbath, Silas. Novella, amen. Praise God. Mostaf, Lashana, praise God. All right. I hope that everyone was blessed. I hope we all continue moving through this week, helping others. Robert, thank you. Much work for God to do this week. Amen. Blessings to you as well. Thank you for another wonderful lesson. Amen. Amen. Pray I don't need surgery on my ankle and that the boot will help heal the injury. Definitely praying for you. Wonderful lesson as always, Tiff. Thanks so much, Darian. Thank you, and God bless you too. Audrey, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you for allowing God to use you. Amen. All right, family, let's close with prayer. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Let's all bow for prayer. God, thank you again for a wonderful lesson. We appreciate your words, and we're asking that you help us to be more like you. Help us to treat others the way you would have us treat them. Be with us throughout the next week. Help us to all take and accept the challenge to help at least one person this week, God. Bring us all back safely next week and ready to dive into your word again. And please also be with all the prayer requests for the Jones family and the loss of their mother, for the Holt family and the loss of their mother, and all of the other prayer requests, Pat included, Lord, um, help that surgery will not be needed. In your name I do pray, Jesus. Amen. Family, enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. We'll see you all next week. Love you all.